It is a wonderful, wonderful day here uh, as we're really moving into the second courageous conversation. And, you know, I, I'll use numbers like the second conversation or we have five convers- courageous conversations. But honestly speaking, most of the time when you're talking with me, there's an element of courage that, that comes in anyway. Right. Uh, the courageous conversations are our opportunity to come together as as a tribe, as a group of outliers, trailblazers, mavericks, pioneers, nonconformists, like people who are just looking to not just be themselves out in the world, but to use who they are in service of other people. And we have this opportunity to come together and really just keep building, uh, building with one another. So as time comes on here, we we will have sessions like this, um, as well as a number of other ways that uh, that we all come together to to grow and be uh, as as we move forward. So what I love about this type of experience here um, is that really we are co-creating it. My what I wanted more than anything else, there's there's two things, there are a few things that that come up here. We are going to spend today really looking into what speaking your truth means to you and giving you an opportunity to practice speaking your truth in different ways, right? Um, The idea of practice is actually at the core of what we do here. And the idea being that the practice, the courage comes by taking a chance and doing it. And eventually by practicing it and doing it doing it in the world that courage transforms into confidence but confidence is the result of of ongoing periods of courage and being able to lean more into that so we'll just we'll play as we need to in this space here uh, i would like to just start off with a with a few agreements as we um as we get started um, and then also then spend some time just bringing each of you individually into the, into the, the virtual room so we can be here together. All right. So the, the first agreement here, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know how to frame this as an, I'll go, I, I know what I'll do. I'll go through the agreements in, in, in this fashion. So I'm going to, um, to share a few things and just given that we are, there's multiples of us on this conversation. Just go ahead and just raise your hand if you uh, agree with it. Um, in the absence, if, if you don't agree with it, you can also just let me know, okay? Um, but throughout this conversation, I, I'm going to hide nothing and hold nothing back. This is just how I'm going to show up. I'm really going to show up from that perspective here. Um, I'm also, I'm, I'm realizing these are my own personal agreements. These are my, these are my commitments to you, right? Uh, the second commitment is that I'm here to serve you rather than please you. And I can feel myself actually slowing down as I say that, because there's an element that, that, um, becomes a, a bit facilitate, facilitated as opposed to just really being present with, with the people that are here. So I'm here to serve you rather than please you. And the third agreement that I, that I have here, and this is something I just wanted to check in with all of you here, because this is important. I have a track record of having life-changing conversations. It's the game that I play. Uh, And for for any conversation, any experience that I'm in, that's the standard that I hold here. Are you open to the possibility of this being a life-changing conversation? You can go ahead and unmute yourself and just say yes, if that's the case. Yes. 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 Awesome. Yes. Great, Muriel. We're hearing you. It's great. It's great to hear. We can't see you. If you'd like to come on video, we'd love to to be in, in here with you as well. Um, but we can hear you and we're glad that you're around. Awesome. So there are a few different things as we go in, in here. We'll go and have this workshop for us to explore our own individual areas. But one of the things that I really look to when we bring the, the tribe together is for each of you to actually get to know each other. That to me is probably one of my larger outcomes because the that's where the growth can continue to go uh, outside of this. So at the end of this year, you also get an invitation to go and join us in the Outlier the Trailblazer um, playground, um, and th- that's a place where we'll we can continue the, the discussion. The community meets on Zoom, but then we continue our, our discussions afterwards through that. All right. So what I'd like to do here is just bring give us each uh, just do a, a quick. Um, check in with all of us, right? Um, and so one, let's go with a one word check-in 
for each of us here. We'll start with Georgie. Actually, yeah, we'll start with Georgie. Then we'll go to Samay. Then we'll go to Muriel. Right. Actually, let me let me go ahead and start really quickly in terms of what's the one word for me. <sighs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my word right now is being. Georgie, how about you? Unsettled. Two words. <laughs> I think it's one. We're good. Samay. My word is exploring. exploring. And Muriel. I'm not sure if you're on mute, but we can't hear you. Do you have, do you have a one word check in, Muriel, just to bring yourself into this room with all of us? Yeah, 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 yeah. But okay. Mute. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay. My word is health. Health. Wonderful. So today here, we're going to really explore what it's like to, um, to have the courage to speak your truth. And what I love to do is just kind of just give us a chance to go around first really quickly and explore what, like, what truth, like your truth actually means to you. Uh, I, I think that there's in this space here, we have enough people where we can slow down and make sure that we're actually getting to the core of what your truth actually is. So I'll start with me here. When I think about speaking, speaking my truth, for me, it, it shows up in a way of speaking, not in an unfiltered manner, but being able to say the things that need to be said even if it's uncomfortable, seeing the, being able to, sp to say things that will actually shift, that actually express what it is that I am feeling uh, in a way that is constructed with everyone else, regardless of what I feel that that consequence might be to me. So when I think about when I'm speaking my truth, that's the space that I come into. Georgie, how about you? Like you came here for a reason, right? Um, instead, you said we're going to talk about this here. What, what about this session, the courage to speak your truth, uh, really called to you? Um, I'm having a hard time pinning down truth and what it is. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in my life right now where I'm leaning towards a wider perspective where I realize that two people's truths can be truthful, even though the, the facts may not relate. Mm. So to me, truth is perspective. And if I want to have any sort of truth, I will go back into myself and I will ask myself on a non-conscious level what resonates. But to me, truth is only ever perspective. Thank you for that, Georgie. Mule, let's go to you next year. Um, what like why did you decide to come today what is what does truth mean to you a truth means that i um i respect myself for being true to myself and being true to yourself can be tricky because many times we can be in denial right so um the introspection about being true to yourself makes you progress towards uh, hopefully positive out outcome. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And then Samang, how about you? We're going to unmute you here. Okay. Hey, sorry about that. I'm just making some coffee. I needed some for the morning. Um, thank you. I, um, I think truth is difficult because like Georgie said, truth has many perspectives of it and many sides. It's like that elephant story and the three old men trying to describe the elephant. Um, and sometimes you think that you have something that you want or that you know that is right for you but the pressures from outside make you doubt your choice right 
So I'm taking some time to say, okay, well, these are things that I've decided. I've given myself my permissions and these are true for me and just sticking with it. Um, so I'm still trying to explore different sorts of ideas saying, hey, well, what is this opportunity? And what am I choosing to give up to take to this opportunity, to take the opportunity at choices I've made and why this is worth it for me? Because when you're able to say the value of why this choice is important, you have more conviction to stay with that choice rather than flip flop around. And I'm a Libra, so I'm very easy to flip flop around. People think that I make choices like very quickly, but no, I action my choices very quickly. I take a very, very long time to sort of decide, is this the right choice or is this the wrong choice? And then afterwards, I still have a tendency to stick with the choice that I've made, but I still doubt it. So I'm still trying to work on that. Fantastic. Thank you, Samay. We're going to really be able to play with, with each of these things here. And it's, it's really interesting. I come into these conversations with uh, an overall uh, agenda and plan in mind, uh, but it, it always is shaped by those that are, that are here. Georgia, you've been uh, on calls with me, so you, you can, you, you've seen how, how, how willing I am to just make sure that we're here in service of whatever needs to be served in this moment, right? Yeah. Awesome. So what I'd like to do here is just give us a chance to, um, to actually sink into what, what it is that we are all here to do, right? And I like, if you have a piece of paper or a pen, um, go ahead and grab it. I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. We'll take about uh, 30 seconds on each. You don't have to say anything out loud uh, for now. Uh, I'm going to mute everyone during this process here, but if you need to say anything, just unmute um, and, just, and just say whatever you need to say, okay? Um, so the first question here, as we, as we get into this here is what is it that I have an easy time? What truth do I have an easy time sharing with people? And it could be, it could be a number of things where you can find, like, it's easy for me to talk to in these situations or with these topics as these are the types of, I'm, it's very easy for me to step in and share my truths. So right now, what we're looking at here it, are the conditions in which, in where speaking your truth actually comes either fairly naturally to you, or it, it naturally, it, it, it can't help but come out, right? I'll give you about another 45 seconds or so with that. Good, I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds. There, there's some things in here to just keep exploring. Um, where are the conditions where you do express your truths? Okay, uh, the second question here, when what are the conditions that typically stop you from speaking your truth? And when I say stop you in this case here, we'll look at it from the standpoint of um, either you are physically stopped, like you're going to say it and you do not, or the times where you're going to say it uh, and you hold yourself back and then you might eventually end up saying it. I just want to kind of see for ourselves here, where for each of us here, where are the, the places where we get close and either stop 
or get close and we'll get checked. So go ahead and take a minute. I'm going to get, yeah, take a minute and a half to just think about that for yourself. Think about those. It could be specific stories, specific instances, or any overall conditions. Okay. The next question here, and then we'll all come back and uh, and share a little bit here. But the next question here is, what would life be like for you? Your life, your business, your career. What would life be like for you if you were able to speak your truth whenever you needed to, or you wanted to? All right. As a participant, oftentimes I'm like, there's almost never enough time for this year. So if you need an extra minute, just give, just give me a, like one more minute and I'll do that. Okay, one more minute. Okay. So why don't we all come back here? What I'd like you to do is to, to take a look at your answers so far um, and just spend some time reflecting on it. What are some themes that show up for you? What are some, some unexpected items around this here? 
And what I'm going to invite us all to do is, is, is just to get a chance to um, to share share an insight, share something that came up for us. We have enough people here to to really just slow down a bit to see like what showed up for us, what what might have surprised you, what might be a question that you want to continue exploring with this year. Um, but go through and just feel free to share share your experience of having gone through these questions. And what I'm going to invite us to do as we go through is if we hear something that, um, that like that we get on a personal level or in some way, shape or form there, I have a, there's, there's a symbol that I like to use, which is, um, it's almost like the cowabunga thing like this, but we just share this like this. And it means me too. I get you. Or I, I for, on some way, shape or form, I'm feeling this. So this way we can be in our shares without having to interrupt. We don't need to go and we don't need to go and say like, like someone else, we can just in the moment, share them, share, pass that on and continue. So Samay, why don't we start with you? Right. Um, and then we'll go to Muriel and then we'll go to Georgie. Um, but just like one insight that that came up or, or, or question that came up for you. Currently, you're muted, so I can go ahead and I'll unmute you right now. Okay, you're unmuted. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, so, Nyama, I think things that are easy to share are ideas. So beliefs, perspectives, ideas are easy to share. But things that are difficult to share, there are things that are personal. So things maybe um, where I have a personal ideal but I feel that other people may not share this, especially in Singapore where uh, the beliefs and cultural um, standings are very different. So it's like, okay, well, maybe this is how it is here. I have a, a, a stand against this, but do I say something or do I just let it go? Because this is obviously socially acceptable. You know, like I love to ask, like how many of you get that experience? It might be specifically related to Singapore, but just like in any environment, where, where it's like, what are the social norms? What are What is actually acceptable in this space here? Can I actually express what it is that I'm looking to express and would that be accepted? Am I getting some of that there, Samay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is, the, there's a reason why I call it the Courage 2 uh, series, the, the Courageous Conversations, because um, there's an element, at least for me, I'm imagining that it can feel uh, unsafe without really knowing what, what is, what's allowed and what's acceptable here. Um, what else might it feel like it, when in those environments where it feels like, uh, and I'll, I'll keep this with you, so maybe let's, let's talk a little bit back and forth before we move on. Um, like, what do you feel when you're in those, in those environments, in those spaces where? Very, very uncertain. Um, a lot of times it's more about, should I say it or should I not say it? So it's like a doubt. It's self. It's a mixture of self doubt and uh, not wanting to impose other, on other people. Someone actually once told me the story about truth and about saying stuff, and that is truth is a burden. So there's times that you can keep things to yourself and don't share it because it would add weight to another person. So there's a mixture of that. There's a mixture of well, if everybody else is doing that and it's socially acceptable here. How can we say, oh, well, I don't like it. So one of the things that I had a lot of difficulty when I came back to Singapore was the use of the word auntie. It's like, you're not my relative. Why should I be calling you auntie? You're totally unrelated to me. You're not my family. So it's, it's those sort of things. I mean, I've gotten more used to it. I call just about everybody auntie now. I forget. And I should be calling people sister because I'm of that age group now. Um, but it's one of those things that it's like, okay, well, I'm very uncomfortable with this. And this was really small, calling some unknown hawker auntie, auntie, mm -hmm. or like the bookshop lady auntie. Mm -hmm. But I felt like it was a big imposition on me. So that's sort of like, yeah, and I didn't know how to bring it up. It's like, we'll just avoid calling anybody anything. Yeah, you know, when you say that, I, I it, it takes me back to uh, myself. Like, you may not know this, but I'm a recovering people pleaser, uh, and uh, I like that. That's why I started this whole thing off with uh, "I'm here to serve rather than please," uh, because that's that's just how I, I, I live that there. And there's, there's this element of you're, you're the ICU there. Uh, there's this element of like I'd rather not say anything then um, because I don't, I don't, I don't 
I'm hearing like you don't want to transfer the burden of the truth. You don't want it, like it's uncomfortable as it is. And so rather than rather than even speaking anything at all or addressing it in any way, um, it's not you just you you just choose not to actually even just approach it. Am I getting some of that right? Yeah. yeah. Like there's there's a it's a really interesting thing that the the concept of the burden of truth. Um and I'd, I'd be curious as that does that still does that still feel like it applies to you? Um in a lot of ways, truth is the truth, and I feel that you are free to speak your truth, but sometimes things are about perspectives, and it's not fair to put that on another person. Okay, interesting. So they're like, um, if you have more to say, please, please, I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So let's let's continue here. Um, we'll come back to some of this. And I think I think what I want to do is give us a chance to actually. Um, there's two things I'm I'm realizing here. What I want to and I and I've set up the stage this way. So I'm going to acknowledge me setting it up this way. What I want to give us a chance to do is to really use this as a practice zone and to to dive deeper into some of the things that are true for us. Some of the truths that we may not normally say out there. Some of the things that like. Um, bring it bring it to a level of of personal for each of us so that when we leave this conversation we can go out and i would say even my objective is to say to be in a place where we speak our truth one more truth each day you know that's it right um what i want to make sure for now we're, we're, we're in a good place but i want to make sure we we um we're able to bring out, go from the um, the concept of truth, and bring it down into our into our world, and we'll see how we can play around with that. Um, I, I just want to make sure, like, a we can have an interesting discussion uh, at that level to talk about truth on on the global scale of things. Uh, but I want to make sure I'm also giving you all a chance to be able to to get into some areas that are really real for you in this moment, because I feel like that like that's that's why that's why you're here. So just just. I'm going to speak this out right now um, as I try and navigate that. You might see me do different things or, or go in different directions to really make sure that um, we continue to get uh, to the core of what it is for you in this conversation. So Muriel, we'll come to you next here. Um, you answered the three questions here. What's, what's one insight? Um, what's one insight that you've had um, from, either, from answering either of those questions or from uh, anything someone, anyone else has said. You're unmuted, so uh, just let Yeah, me. yeah. Hello again. Uh, but by the way, I really wanted to join this, but I have to move to a meeting soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, I couldn't make the perfect time. Mm -hmm. but, so, but to, to answer your questions, uh, one, the first one was conditioned to express the true, your truth, right? Mm -hmm. So I think one condition for me, because I don't know if my truth is the truth, actually, what is truth? It's, <laughs> it's a loaded, um, loaded question. But, um, you know, you want your truth may not be someone else's truth or perception of your truth. And one truth is that no judgment is paramount. Whatever you say is your truth should not be ju judged so, and reversely whatever someone's expressed their truth should not be ju um, judged we all have an opinion and um, but um, that's it we can agree to disagree that's your truth that's my truth uh, and we are not going to go to war uh, but the condition to me is to uh, actually being rested and feeling in good mental and phys physical state Otherwise, your mind can be very distorted if you don't have the inner balance. So that's one thing. Uh, what stops me from speaking the truth? Honestly, it's uh, being surrounded by a toxic environment. When you feel that you're in a toxic environment, um, speaking the truth is pointless because you feel that it's going to be antagonized and uh, belligerent. And I have a good sense of what a toxic environment is. So <laughs> it's like uh, Simei said, should I speak or should I not? Or in my mind, the 
a song popped up of the clash should i stay or should i go and toxic environment is uh really i should go so this is what would stop me from speaking the truth because it's pointless to express yourself in a toxic environment and lastly what would be life be uh, what life would be if uh, you could speak the truth all the time right and to me, it's, um, it might be invasive for others. You have to respect your environment. So speaking your truth all the time can be quite egotistic and selfish because uh, people maybe don't want to hear it or it's, um, yeah, it's a matter of respect. So we have to, I feel that I have to refrain myself because I'm quite direct refrain myself from speaking the truth, my truth all the time, because it might be invasive and um, quite um, disrespectful for others. That's it. Thank you there, Muriel. Um, and uh, there's two things. Firstly, I'm just glad that you're part of this community that you're, that you're here on this conversation. I know that you, you won't be able to stay for the entire time, but um, I, I think I, I just want to acknowledge you for being here for what you can. Uh, and con and really being present and contributing in that way. So whenever you have to take off, please feel free to do so. Right? Um, there's there's an element of what I'm hearing here that that comes down to uh, like the environment itself. If it feels toxic, then like there's there's um, there's breaks there. And there's part of this here from here from a standpoint of being, uh, will it even be received? Can can they even like? Can they, is it even? Is there even a point to expressing it there? Um, and then the other side of it here that I'm hearing uh, that also plays out is an element of being invasive for others. I think it, it kind of has uh, its own different flavor of like, you know, truth can be a, bur a burden. Um, but like, are you being egotistical and selfish? Is it is it more respectful to not share your, your truth than to share your truth? And you know, I like we're gonna get to, we're gonna come to you, Georgie, in, in a bit. But I think that this is this might be an interesting conversation just for all of us to have a little bit here because there seem to be some themes that they're coming up around this. Uh, I I'm gonna start off here um, and speak a little bit of my truth on on this one here. Uh, and the idea here is, in my mind, this is a practice zone. This is a chance to be able to see what else is there. Um, one of the things that comes to mind here is. The spaces, so so we can talk. We can talk about things from like a. Sorry, let me make sure that I'm myself and practicing what I preach around uh, being able to keep this real. So one of the things that is really interesting to me that I would be really interested in exploring with you all is um, the feeling of like the feeling of respect and respecting the environment that's there, uh, and I'm kind of curious how you all like navigate when the environment itself is not one that is all that respectful so i'm like i'm like there's there's a part of it that feels like um i'm thinking about myself where i've been in toxic environments um and rather than actually speaking up and this is this is where i feel like the 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 merit of this call even came from where it's like when it's not easy to say it, when we're in these toxic environments, when we're seeing people get in that are that should have a voice at the table that aren't uh, being heard, when we're when we're seeing injustices uh, in a way that is taking place from us, and it's no longer comfortable, and it doesn't seem to fit what the environment is asking for, but the environment itself is not creating something that could, that actually supports other people. Do we choose to 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 speak up or not? Um, and the question that comes for me here, uh, something that I like, something that, that had become uh, a practice of mine was to ask myself, who wins? Who wins in this case by me not sharing it, by me not speaking up? Like, am, am I actually, am I, am I, it, are there times when it's appropriate to put the burden of truth on other people? Are there, or at least to share that burden of truth? Are there times to hold people accountable uh, with that, even in environments where, and because I, I feel that it's like speaking your truth becomes the difficult part when it is in a space that where it may not be re received, where where you, where you are in a space where it might be attacked or antagonized, or um, I think about like social norms are a great way to keep people in line. 
right? They're a great way to keep people from actually actually um, moving against uh, what has been set up. And somebody wins because somebody has set up the rules to be that in this case, right? So I'd love to just like open a discussion about the, the, the elements of burden, invasiveness. It's come up a few different times and I think it might be worth exploring. Um, I will come back into this year with my own personal story. I'm going to just try and like just see, see sometimes where, I, where I have brought this in from a personal perspective versus the, uh, the concept of it all. But for now, why don't we just open up the discussion overall and just see like, uh, how, like how much of that rings true and how much of you would love to be able, like, like, yeah, let me just let me just open up the discussion and just see see where it goes from there. Does anyone have any thoughts, any comments, any experiences themselves with being in these these kinds of environments and still seeing how they how they uh, choose to show up? Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, essentially, Muriel, I, I just want to just open up a dialogue around uh, what you brought up around the invasive environments and working like and toxic environments, uh, keeping up respect. I, generally speaking, I, I just I feel like there's value with all of us here, and so I just want to just without having too much structure on it, just give us a chance to speak out some things and, and explore. So I'm seeing Georgie's hand here, and then um, and then we'll just go from there. So Georgie, any thoughts? Okay. Uh, yeah, I've uh, been in the experience in terms of family feud, caught between two people I love, and trying to express and not being able to and being overridden. Uh, I've lost my voice over it because I've not been able to express my truth or not hear it. But really, this is their own struggle and nothing that I say will stop this collision course that they're on. So the my truth has been... I'm sorry, I love you both. I am not taking sides. Don't ask me to. And don't ask for my opinion unless you're ready to listen. That's been my truth. Yeah. Thank you, Georgie. Yeah, there's... Um, uh, Mira, is there, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some sounds. Is there something else you wanted to add to this? No, no, I totally agree. It's, I don't ask my opinion because, you know, it's going to be unproductive because they are not ready to listen. They are stuck in their tunnel vision of point. Very often, if it's a feud or a, a finger pointing situation, which is just a, a useless ping pong game. So it's better to remove yourself from this toxic environment. Although I agree with you if that's what you meant, um, Niyama, that uh, sometimes toxic environments or not, it's good to challenge the system and have, you know, express yourself anyway. But it has to be done diplomatically, <laughs> cautiously. And it comes with your voice, your facial expressions, your gesture, your posture, which communication in the way you are perceiving your communication can trigger a lot of reaction in people. So this, um, you know, maybe a smile not frowning, uh, not doing too many gestures and pose, making people feel comfortable in what you have to say. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm loving this here, like just keeping this a little bit more in the, in the discussion format for now. Um, Muriel, like, it's really interesting. As you're saying this, I realized that um, I am now at a certain point where um, I actually invite the discomfort. And this is something that like it, it, it is, it, I invite the discomfort because I, because at, at certain points, and this is not, um, this, as I'm hearing you say this, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is something that is actually something that's that's different that I might do than the most the most others, um, from the standpoint of uh, allow how do I say it, allowing the space for transformation, allowing the space for some kind of change be, by by um, being in a space of discomfort. So I appreciate you saying that there because you've given me a chance to to. Um, see some of my own approaches uh as well from a different different light and i just want to just like open it's opening up different things in my mind as, as you're saying it 
what you're doing though, Niyama, is consensual. You're inviting people to engage in a way that uh, invites life transformation. And I'm all about those truths. Mm. I'm all about opening up different perspectives. But I think maybe where we're reacting to it is maybe in terms of the wider world, just going up and, you know, okay, here's a classic example in Singapore. Sometimes they don't have filters about certain things. Yeah. Hello, you put on a lot of weight. You're quite fat at the moment. Those are truths. Great. But there are ways and means, you know? Yeah. yeah. Are um, you pregnant? Are you pregnant? <laughs> yes, for the last 20 years. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> so it, to me, it, in that wider perspective, it's really down. I, I put it down as my insight that this area that I'm struggling with, is it my truth versus others? Is it speaking versus listening? Is it conviction versus connection? And I think the real difference is, is if you're in a one-on-one -on -one where you do connect and you are enriching each other's lives and you have permission, you know, uh, uh, tacitly or otherwise, that you can engage, then that's great. You can go there and you can push and you can speak your truth because there's an element of safety that people know your intention are, are good, is good. So to me, it came down to the, okay, because I was really struggling with this whole idea of, you know, me talking versus speaking my truth. And I love to speak my truth. And it came down to one thing. It's like, I've made an oath. My heart is the captain and my mind is the crew. If my heart is saying, there's not compassion in this, I'm doing it because of ego, then shut the fuck up. You know, it doesn't help. If you're out there and you're engaging to help and it's mutual, then it's beautiful. <laughs> Can I add something? Please do. Huh? Yes, please do. Okay, along this line, uh, anecdotal, but uh, a real life experience currently with my eldest daughter who is 16 years old and going through adolescence. We have a wonderful relationship, but she's quite, we can be quite fusional and volcanic together. And, um, I, I'm now reframing and trying to understand her or position myself differently so that when she, we disagree about something or she gets angry about something I say, she's not going to storm out of the house saying, oh, you don't understand me, right? So how I'm working on making her feel that I understand her, but I have to like I say, reframe or change the way I approach this so that she feels that she's understood, even though I may not agree with her. And we've been working on that together and it's working. It is actually working. Uh, and I'm using my neuro-linguistic programming skills to, to address that because an adolescent is going through difficult times, hormonal, etc., And, People, not adolescents only, but especially adolescents, feel misunderstood or not understood. So uh, working on your approach to make people feel they are understood that you're listening, um, it's not a winning game. It's just uh, something to be more conscious and diplomatic about. That's it. Thank you for that there. Shamay, I'd love to bring you into this conversation uh, and this discussion a bit here. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to share, please do. Um, we'll go from there. I'll go in and oh, Okay, good. You're unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it's the first time I've used the app, so I'm sort of like going through all the different, yeah. figuring out all the functionality. Yeah. Um, there's actually a couple of points. Uh, one is back to Mural about like, you know, talking with a 16-year-old. I've realized that talking to people much younger than myself, the frames of references are very, very different. So being able to understand and say, okay, look, I understand that it's different here and trying to make sure that, you know, both of you guys are aligned in how you're referring to things is also very important. Um, and then about speaking truth, the example that I had that I sort of said it, I think my brother agreed with me my mom basically shut it down. And then after that, I didn't bring it back up 
to anybody else. Um, it was my uncle's funeral. My mom's sister's husband had passed away. Um, and during that uh, funeral, he'd made a comment. And it was, I felt very, very hurtful. My uncles and aunts have a son that is estranged. He married a Muslim woman and they have four Muslim children. It's a, it's a Christian service. The people there are all Christians. And the pastor basically said that my uncle's greatest wish was that his whole family could join him in heaven and basically excluded his son and his four grandchildren that was sitting there. And he said it multiple times within that service. I felt that that was very wrong. But of course, I'm atheist. And perhaps this is the belief of this church. Because when I spoke to my mom about it, she said, well, you know, basically his kids and that son were not going to go to heaven. And it was Uncle Chong's greatest hope that they could be reunited in heaven. But I, I felt that this was, um, this was very, mm, I don't know, because it's not, um, it could have been Uncle Chong's greatest wish. And I, I find it very hard to express what the difficulty of this is because different people have different religions. They go to different places. I don't particularly believe in either of these religions, but I just felt that it was very, very exclusive. I think that that's a part of it, that you're basically saying this person who you haven't seen for so long and the kids, the cousins that I'd never met, are excluded from their grandfather and father's death ceremony and funeral. And I didn't know how to say that. Thank you for, for bringing that in here, Shemay. And, and even just being able, like, like, even just the working out of it in this conversation, uh, I want to just really acknowledge you for um, taking the time to like really see what it is that you were trying to say and then bring it out in this conversation right now. Um, there's, I can, I can feel that like that, the feeling of exclusion right there really just really, uh, this really pops up. It, it's family. It, you'll find with me that whenever we get into family, I end up, I end up like allowing, allowing a lot more space, um, rather than diving deeper into it. Cause it's like, it's almost as if like there's, there's rules in the world and then there's family that have their own elements there. But what, what the impact that you, what you just shared had on me was to take me to uh, feelings of exclusion. And for myself, when I want to speak up for others um, and to speak to speak something into the room on behalf of others, it usually comes from, the, from a place, or it often comes from a place where I feel like someone is either being excluded or they're made to not belong, or they're being, or they're, they're being kept from actually being able to be celebrated and valued for exactly who they are. And that, as we're talking like that, that really um, becomes more clear to me uh, in here. And so I just want to thank you for your share uh, and, and for sharing that here and taking the time to, to share that truth with, with us here in this moment. Yeah. Awesome. So as, as we are, we're about to wrap up here in about a few more minutes before the end of this conversation, um, I love to, uh, there are, there are some, there's some, some thoughts in here, but I want to go to Georgie, just like you, we've been talking. Is there anything that, any insights that you've had from this entire conversation, um, anything that, that comes up where you want to just share? We didn't get a chance to like really slow down with you and see uh, where your thoughts were after those questions, um, but we've kind of gone beyond that. So uh, either the questions or discussions, uh, any, any, anything that you want to just bring into this room so we can just kind of see a little bit of your world and how you're thinking about things. Uh, yeah, there was an awareness as uh, I, as we were going through this process, actually, of where I had my own thoughts, and it was having the patience to let other people express their thoughts as well. And uh, and I got so much value out of everything that Sime said, and Uriel as well. That there is value in listening. Do you know what I mean? I'm often the first one who's out there. Oh, listen to me, listen to me. Uh, and really, that is there is a time when you. It's not necessarily about the truth, but it's about listening as well. That, that thing is much of a value. Um, I also just 
watched as well because when Simo told me that story, the instinctive reaction that came up was that's really narrow minded and bigoted and, you know, love is meant to be unconditional. And then I looked at myself and went, oh, well, that's how often does that work in my life, you know? Um, but that you approached it in a very, very clean way from a coach and you, you reflected back. So kudos there. Um, yeah, I think the key thing about going um, the insight was really about that idea of trusting, trusting all connections and trusting all truth when I switch my mind off and just always being aware of where ego plays in. You know? That I hadn't put that connection together versus my truth versus others you can accommodate all of those if you take your ego out you know and it comes from a place of love maybe the intention was nice that he wanted his all his kids to be there in heaven with him isn't that a nice thought the execution wasn't great you know if that makes sense well let me does it make sense to you georgie yeah yeah i think that like this in these in these experiences here i know one of the things that i that i i'm going to say the word protect here but like that i, that I keep to, to try and hold dear is that we are all going to learn from each other but no one is here teaching mm. it's a, a very interesting concept where we're all going to learn from each other but no one is teaching so the main thing here is like did you get what you needed from that yeah, yeah it was a reminder yeah. I, and I, I want to, I want to thank you for calling out for, for acknowledging something that like that happened with my response to Samay. And I think it's, it's in that same kind of um, regard, right. Where in this space here, I'm like, there's, there's, you can do no wrong. This is the space that like it, you can get messy in, in whatever messy looks like to say the thing that's either uncomfortable or the thing that uh, the thing that brings up real energy and moves energy within you. And the element here of it just being, can as as we're in the reflection of it all, can we learn something more about ourselves as individuals, and can we see something about ourselves in other people that we can go ahead and and uh, and move move with? So you'll often find me in these kinds of sessions here, uh, really sharing either the impact of what of what it is that you just shared without having to go any further, or sharing that uh, what I get about you as a result of this. And this is just here to continue to deepen our relationships with each other and also reinforce how we, we how showing up as you are is important. I, I, I think my thing is I wanted you, Sime, to know the impact that like your your sharing this in this environment really had on me. And this and this is this is one of those things where when we talk about the truth, it could seem like, oh, I have to go how do I say it? This could have been something that that one could con conceive as a burden, you know. That's like, oh man, it just it, it's a really heavy topic or whatever. And I'm like, I want you to know, like this to me was a gift, uh, and and like and making sure that we're that we're, that we're putting that out there. Uh, and and this it's in some of these places here where like these are the these are the places where we get a chance to to go and play with. Y'all are here for a reason because you you're looking to do something beyond yourself. You're looking to show up in the world in, in, in a way that, uh, in my mind, it's like you are the gift. You know, going out to dinner with you or going out or having like be, being in a really like serious conversation is all like you're always bringing your gifts to this table. So I want to thank you all for the way that you showed up uh, here for helping me even see like, oh, wait, this is what this is all about uh, and being and being willing to play in that way. As we wrap up for today, um, there's there's something that came up here that I just want to kind of po point out some of the the, the the themes throughout here. And the idea of these of pointing out these themes is not that there's a right or a wrong with it, uh, but more to just give us. I, I find that when we have the distinction, when we're able to see it, we can make a choice. We can make we can make different choices here. Uh, so some of the themes that came up here were like the idea of my truth could be a, a burden or invasive to others. My truth can be, can be negative for others. I just thought that was just a really interesting um, line of, of discussion um, just to kind of see how, how is it that we might be looking at our own truths in, in, in that means. And then the, the two sides of that that also continue to expand for me are um, even if it, if that is like, hey, does it need to be the case, right? Can sometimes this be a gift, even though it feels more burdensome? And then the other side of it too is like, 
even if it is invasive or, or burden, can that element be, um, is there, is there any, is, are there times where there, that would still be positive or that is the intent? The intent is to be burdensome. A lot of people like, I'm like, I bring gravitas to everything. I was talking to someone, I was like, I can make the fallen of a leaf sound like the most important thing in the world, you know? Um, and there's an, there's an intent behind it because it's like, actually, we need to wake up and we need to really see that there. So I just want to just like bring that up as a theme of something that came, that can, that came into this conversation. Um, Georgie, you made up a, you, you said something uh, really interesting. You talked about um, the space. I'm able to speak my truth or we can feel more comfortable speaking our truth because uh, I, it's been created this way. We were invited into this space this way. Uh, and that got me thinking uh, around, uh, okay, so this was not a space that was bestowed upon me. Uh, it was a simple decision to uh, decide to invite people into this here. This was set up, this was an invitation that was set up as a, you know, at this time, at this place, in this context, so on and so forth. But then I, I think what I'd like to invite us all here is to see, are there ways that we can invite people into moments where we can speak our truth in the moment? For me, I typically end up doing it through agreements. So you'll see me, I, I can be in the middle of, I remember a conversation where I was meeting someone for the first time and trying to talk about the work that I did. And I realized I was posturing and I wasn't actually speaking any of what I really, what I really wanted. I was like, I think she wants to have a coach that's going to sound like this, that's done this stuff here. And about 30 minutes into the coffee conversation, we had gone down that path. And I realized that like, I really wasn't speaking my truth in that moment. And so what I did is I was like, I like, hold on one second. I just have like three questions. I just want to just get in, in agreement with you. Are you cool with me hiding nothing and holding nothing back? Halfway through the conversation, <laughs> this like the, these the, the agreements and invitations came up, but it gave to to the point of invitation and creating that space. I get I get curious around like how we can be even more courageous with speaking our truth if we can create those kinds of environments in the moment, in the moment there, uh, and create an area. And you'll notice that I like. This time around, I said this. This is my this is my commitment to the conversation. If you spend time with me one on one, I will actually frame it as an agreement, and you have to just say yes or no to it all. Uh, and I think it also ties into that element of permission there. Uh, and so, like the idea here, um, can we create the environment so that we can be courageous with it? My from my experience, the answer. I have seen examples of that here, but what I will also say is that it's not necessarily the cleanest thing. It doesn't lead to, it is, it doesn't, um, it can be messy as, as it goes along. And typically what I've found is when, when I, in those spaces, in spending the time to invite and create that, that space there, regardless of, of the actual exchange, the end result ends up being something that we can typically move forward with uh, in a constructive manner. So I wanted to kind of call that out as well as a potential other way to play with being courageous and, and find a way for it to basically not be invasive, you know, to, to, and, and to say, Hey, to, to, to change the context such that you, cause just that we ourselves are not holding on to it as individuals and instead creating a different experience. So that's the, we're at time right now. I feel like I've, uh, I, I want to just say like how much I really appreciate each and every one of you here for uh, a trust in me, for trusting yourselves, and for being willing to speak what was true for you in this moment here. This is the first time I've I've done a session that has gone this way, Georgie. You've seen a few of different things that I've done, uh, and like every time that we're here, we're working with what what is in this magic here. This is what the tribe is about. It's about, it's given us a chance to be messy. It's given us a chance to explore. It's given us a chance to, uh, to take the things that outside in, in the world seem to be hard and fast rules around how the world has to go and to practice creating new agreements, creating new rules that allow us to show up more powerfully and to continue to um, spread the gifts that we have in the world in a way that keeps us both safe uh, and also allows us to be brave enough to be safe on behalf, to, to create safety on behalf of other people. I'd love to end this here. Um, we're at time, so if we have to leave, please feel free to just drop off. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to just leave this with one sentence that, of what's going on uh, for you, one thing you'd like to take away from here, um, 
or one just just one thing you'd like to just bring in, into the circle to help us close off here, um, we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see that there there's several other co courageous conversations coming up. Um, you're a member of the tribe. Uh, once you go to niyama.com slash tribe and sign up, you'll get invitations to these courageous, to courageous conversations and other things that we're doing. It's time to start bringing the community together and we'll keep exploring and experimenting. I'll ask for your feedback. I'll ask for your referrals. But right now I would love to just kind of close today's conversation with just one sentence that you're, you're taking away or that you're, that you're leaving here with. <sighs> Um, Georgie, would you like to, to share a sentence with us? Yeah. Speak the truth from the heart with sensitivity as to context and timing with the agreement of others. Thank you. Samang. Um, speaking the truth with the idea that you're engaging to help that whatever you're saying is about, you know, can, is it a win rather than, you know, what, what, who wins by my speaking up? So about engaging to help rather than just speaking from ego. Fantastic. And I'll end off with mine here where it's speaking the truth from the element of allowing the vulnerability of any moment to to hold its space and to have its place and to be able to navigate and trust enough in myself to be able to navigate whatever else may come from there. Dance in the moment. Dancing in that moment. I appreciate you all. Okay. You all have a great day. We'll see you again in the next conversation. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye, Bye guys.